Chapter 20 The Dream Landscape, The Physical World, Probabilities, and Your Daily Experience. Because you are physical creatures, even your dreams must be translated through the reality of your flesh. In Mass and through the methods I have described, you help form a physical reality in which, however, each experience is unique. In the same way, each of you form an overall dream world in which there is some general agreement, but in which each experience is original. The dream world has its reaches as the physical one does. In waking reality, beliefs take time before their materialization is apparent. From infinite probable acts, only one can be physically experienced as a rule. The dream world operates as a creative situation in which probable acts are instantly materialized, laid out in actual or symbolic form. From these, you then choose the most appropriate for physical expression. There are other important reasons for dreaming, but here we will confine ourselves to this particular issue and to the dream landscape itself. It is only because you seem to expect dream experience to be like daily life that you find so many dreams chaotic. Normally, a tree does not change into a peacock, for example. If you remember such a dream event, it seems meaningless in the morning. Your moods and emotions have greater mobility in the dream state. You may feel rooted like a tree at one moment, and in the next experience yourself as a beautiful peacock, in which case you will perceive the tree change into the bird. Disconnected from their usual daily attraction to physical events, your emotions will often form their own landscapes, utilizing dreams as their creative medium. I have explained the great correlation that exists between your feelings and beliefs and physical conditions, such as weather. In somewhat the same way, you have a part to play individually in the creation of the dream landscape. It is also the result of your feelings and beliefs on a different level, and while it is not perceivable in physical terms, laid out with its mountains and continents as your planet is to be examined by your instruments, it exists in terms quite as valid. This does not mean that the dreams can be deciphered by the use of any given general symbols. As you create and experience your daily life through your personal feelings and beliefs, so the same applies to dream reality. There, however, your thoughts and feelings become quote-unquote instantly alive, springing up one upon another, coming full-blown as it were. The dream world exists in terms of energy also, of course, but simply at ranges that are not physically obvious. Much of your interior creative work and planning is done at this level. There must be some differentiation between dream and waking experience just so that you can manipulate in the more narrowly focused daily life. However, there is no great reason for the vast separation that now exists between your waking and sleeping lives. As I mentioned earlier, the division is largely the result of your mass and private beliefs in the nature of reality and in the habits the race has acquired of separating quote-unquote objective data from subjective. When you are determined to manipulate your environment, then you separate yourself from it. Since you are part of it, this also leads you to try to place yourself apart from your own subjective reality. It is quite possible to take your normally conscious quote-unquote I into the dream state to your advantage. When you do this, you will see that the dreaming quote-unquote I and the waking I are one, but operating in entirely different environments. Therefore, you become familiar with depths of experience and knowledge unknown to you before. You acquire a true flexibility and expanded awareness of your own being and open channels of communication between your waking and dreaming realities. This means that you are far better able to utilize unconscious knowledge and also to acquaint the unconscious with your present physical situation. Such a procedure can bring you in contact with wisdom you have been denying yourself, help unify your entire life situation, and release your energy for practical everyday purposes. Even the decision to try such a venture is beneficial since it automatically presupposes a flexibility of attitude on the part of the conscious self. If you are afraid of your dreams, you are afraid of yourself. As your present situation, with all of its challenges, joys, and problems, is contained in condensed form within each of your days, so the same applies to your life. Each night's dreams, then, provide you with a rich bed of creativity. 
spread out before you in great profusion, you will find not only any problems, but their solutions. Now, in physical terms, it may take some time before your conscious mind accepts or recognizes a diagnosis given in a dream. It may come to you later in altered form as a hunch or sudden intuition or an urge for action. If you do not trust yourself, you may ignore such impetuses and not take advantage of the answers. The enlightened conscious mind is always alert for such messages. You can also go steps beyond this into the dream condition itself, requesting certain dreams, certain solutions, and therefore shortening the time, so to speak, that may be involved otherwise. Generally speaking, if you do not believe that you can become conscious in the dream state, then that feat will be relatively impossible. It will go against your idea of reality, thereby preventing the opening and acceptance that is necessary. While your beliefs do structure much of your dream activity, other issues are also involved simply because the focus of your awareness is not acutely directed toward physical reality, but is only opaquely concerned with it. Once again, thoughts and ideas have their own electromagnetic validity also. In waking life, you test your ideas in the world of facts. Facts are only accepted fiction, of course, but the ideas must make sense and fit into the accepted quote-unquote story. In the dream state, you allow yourself greater freedom, trying out certain ideas and beliefs in this more plastic environment. You may therefore accept new beliefs initially in the dream state, and the intellectual or emotional realization may only come quote-unquote later. In dreaming, the conscious mind itself is far more lenient and playful. It can afford this greater permissiveness because it well knows that it need not immediately test out theory in the daily context. It very willingly looks forward toward those areas of the inner self's experience to see what it can find for its own use, quite like an explorer searching for resources in virgin territory. The earth-tuned consciousness must deal within the space-time context, for only inside this framework can it clearly perceive events. In the dream state, consciousness ignores space-time relationships to a large degree, and yet it is still firmly based upon the body's corporeal mechanism. Dreams, then, are physically experienced. You perceive yourself running, talking, eating in quite physical activities, except that they are not performed by the body that lies on the bed. The orientation is that of sense data lived most vividly, and yet again at an opaque angle. In other words, in most dreams, data is still being received and interpreted in the light of corporeal life. These are the dreams most remembered also. Beyond this, there are experiences but seldom recalled, in which the usual identification of your consciousness with physical life orientation is gone. Images as you think of them are based upon your own neurological structure and your interpretations of these. When you consider survival after death, for instance, you imagine all the senses fully operating, though perhaps in a non-physical body. Perception without images seems impossible in that context. Yet in some dream situations, you enter a state of awareness quite divorced from that kind of sense data. Images as such are not involved though later they may be manufactured unconsciously for the sake of translation. In those conditions, you come close to an understanding of what your consciousness is when it is not physically oriented at all. In your daily life, you may suddenly know something without knowing how you know, without being aware of any particular image or sense impression. The knowledge is simply, quote-unquote, there. This kind of activity approaches the sort of knowing of your own consciousness when it is uninvolved with any kind of ordinary sense stimuli. It simply knows. In those certain dream states, then, you know in the same fashion. You experience your being unallied with flesh. That kind of dream awareness can literally regenerate your life, though the original impact will be forgotten, and the entire event will usually be translated into images before awakening. Such dream events may be called experiences of basic being. During them, the self or consciousness literally travels to the source of its own energy. On another level, atoms possess the same kind of knowing. It may seem that such comprehensions have little to do with your daily life, particularly since they are so seldom recalled, and then only in translation. 
yet they provide you with additional energy and when you need it most. In periods of stress, the physically attuned consciousness will often momentarily forsake its usual orientation and let itself fall back, as it were, into the source of its own being, where it knows it will be regenerated and indeed reborn. While you are physically connected, you must interpret experience in sense terms, even that in dreams. At times, your consciousness can range into other areas, but then the events must be physically translated in some way. In waking life, you perceive only certain portions of events that fall within your space-time continuum. In dreams, you may have a greater glimpse. You may, for example, see in the past, present, and future objects that in your time will take up any given space. Often, such a dream will be considered meaningless because at your quote-unquote fact level, past, present, and future objects cannot appear at once in the same space. The space is not the same or identical in any case. It only appears to be so to you. Space itself accelerates in ways that you do not understand. You are not tuned into those frequencies. Any point in space is also a point in what you think of as time, a doorway that you have not learned to open. In somewhat the same manner, your physical brain is a doorway that triggers activity in your mind. Your beliefs, then, are largely responsible for the areas of the brain that you activate and for the resulting non-physical action of the mind. Physical focus provides you with a magnificent reality, intent and specialized. Were it not for dream activity, however, you would be, relatively speaking, enclosed within it, afraid to try out new concepts and intuitive realizations in the face of what seems to be such rock-bed reality. The dream state provides you with a preliminary stage in which working hypotheses can be creatively formed and tried out in a context of playfulness. Still, the dreams that you have and recall, and the resulting solution of many problems, represent only the surface layer of dream activity. To follow yourself into your own dream is a fascinating endeavor, and there, in the dream context, you can become aware of the working of your own consciousness. To do so, you must believe in the integrity of your own being. If you do not trust your waking self, you will not trust your dreaming self, and the landscape of your dreams will appear threatening. Your belief that dreams are unpleasant can make them so, or at best you will only remember frightening dream events. If you believe that you do not dream, however, you will inhibit memory of them, but you will still dream. Those rich experiences will not form a part of your conscious life because of your belief. Your dreams are private as your waking life is, and yet there is a mass waking experience and a mass dreaming experience in which each individual finds his or her own place and accepts or rejects events. In your terms, the race at any given quote-unquote time simultaneously works out problems in the dream state and those solutions are then physically materialized. Because there is more freedom from time and space in the dream state, there is greater overall perspective. Many solutions that may appear poor in the short range, as they are physically activated, will in the longer range be seen as highly creative. Both privately and en masse, then, mankind utilizes the dream world as a preliminary working ground. From these quote-unquote fantasized realities, and probable dream events come all the physically accepted quote-unquote facts in your world of true and false. Probable events, experienced dream-wise, and quite valid in other areas of reality, become, say, false in your world, while the same kind of event, physically actualized, becomes true. Your wars are fought, lost, or won in the dream world, first of all, and your physical rendition of history follows the thin line of only one series of probabilities.